Welcome back, brothers and sisters. I am Braden. This is Langley Outdoors Academy, the gun news and update channel that not only tells you what's going on, we also tell you what we're going to do about it. And thank you for stopping by. Today, we're going to talk about the 4473 changes that the ATF is doing to affect every single individual that buys a firearm from here going forward. Now, this is stemming from the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. We're going to dive into everything, and I cannot wait to hear what you guys think in the comments field below. And if you are new or you are returning and you like the videos, please smash that subscribe button. We are always looking to earn that subscription to get the fold even bigger, get in the trenches so we can pass the blessing of the Second Amendment along to the next generation. And thank you so much in advance for your consideration. But my brothers and sisters, what we're about to hit on is something that's coming from the new 4473 forms or that FBI ATF form that basically gets in the way of every time you hand a, you know, buy a gun, that bad boy. There's some changes, and again, as I mentioned in the intro, it's coming from the Bipartisan Communities, Safer Communities Act, or the Red Flag Law. Now, you'll notice one of the points in here affects directly 18, 19, and 20-year-olds, because the ATF, even what they did in Maine, is now translating nationwide. We covered it. Let's get it. Let me show you what they are doing. This came out December 8th. Notice, regarding recent changes to the ATF form 4473, again, that is the Firearm Purchasing Background Form. Due to new statutory requirements set forth in both the NICS Denial Notification Act and the Bipartisan Safer Community Act, and to reflect the implementation of ATF Final Rule 2021, that's the ghost gun rule, has, the ATF Form 4473 has been revised. Now, this is important because this is how they get you. This is where all the nuance lies, okay? Any firearm, this is the first thing, any firearm received by an FFL that was privately made, not manufactured by another licensee, must now be recorded on the ATF Form 4473. Privately made firearms, or PMFs, has been added to the Item 1, Section A. It now reads, quote, Manufacturer and importer, if any or privately made firearm, if the manufacturer and importer are both different, include both. This is what we talked about in the ATF ruling when they said you're going to have to mark every single ATF, or excuse me, every single um, PMF or person made firearm that comes into a FFL. That part's in there. You've got to have a record of it. It's now being registered. That's important. Well, excuse me, not a, not a direct true registry. It's now being on the form 4473 with identifying and identifying markers. Make sure I'm really specific about how I say that. Now, here's two other things that you need to know about. The following two prohibiting questions have been added to Section B. One, do you intend to purchase or requ acquire any firearm list on this form or any continuation sheets or ammunition for the sale or disposition to any other person described in the questions or to a person described who does not fall in the non-immigrant exception? This is all about the straw purchases. They're rewording the straw purchases portion in here, aligning to the idea that it's too loose in the system. So now a person just lies on this form and everything's solved. That's where you're looking at, all right? Second thing, do you intend to sell or otherwise dispose of any firearm listed on this form and any continuation sheets or ammunition in furtherance of any felony or other offense punishable by imprisonment? Same thing, straw purchases. They're fine tuning out all the straw purchases. So if you do this and you break this law and they come after you because you broke a law, then they've got you on paperwork. That's essentially what's happening there. So, so far we've got ghost guns and now we've got the straw purchasing thing. That's something that they've been hitting on a lot, but they've been kind of skirting around. And this part is the 18 to the 20 year olds. This is the one that really gets me because it's discretionary and it's, a, it's subjective. To comply with the BSCA 10 day waiting period on certain transfers involving transferees under the age of 21, section C of the form has been revised as follows. This is what the ATF was doing when they arbitrarily choose 18-year-olds utilizing local and state and mental health records that pass in the Bipartisan Safer Communities Act. Everything that they do has tendrils everywhere. You're talking about an octopus, and that's why we fight so hard, because this type of stuff is where it gets really scary if you're 18 to 20-year-olds, because now you're special. Prior to the next POC information, an, insta uh, excuse me, an instructional header has been added stating, quote, notice, if the transferee buyer is under 21, a waiting period of up to 10 days may apply where notification from NICS is received within three business days to further investigate a possible qualifying juvenile record. A NICS check is only valid for 30 calendar days from the date recorded in question 27A. Now, if you stack this on everything that we've covered in ex uh, pilot programs that the ATF was doing in Maine, you're talking about 18 to 20 year olds getting pretty much a mandatory, we're going to investigate you further, up to a max of 10 days. 
This is incredibly important. And this is the piece that I think they're going to get in trouble on down the road. If you're isolating and discriminating against a certain group of people, 18 to 20 year old or 18 to 20 year olds, you need to have justification in order to do some sort of further investigation. It can't just be because you fit in this demographic. It's kind of the same thing as you can have certain firearms, you can't have other certain firearms. You have certain rights, you don't have other certain rights. You can go to war, but you can't have these rights. There's lots of things, and I think personally, the big focal point going forward in lawsuits and challenges is going to be that 18 to the 20 year old bracket because they are disproportionately affected by rulings that are arbitrary in nature. And that's what I've got for you guys. Let me know what you think in the comments below, and I will see you on the next one. I'm Braden. See you later.